One benefit to knowing how to sew is the fact that you can fix things. We had uh, a dear sweet guy and his friend um, come and cut down a tree in our backyard and it was very cold and um, we got to know each other a little bit and he said, I've got this one coat I just used to love to wear, but it's all ripped in the back and I don't think anything can be done about it. And I said, well, just bring it over and I'll see if I could fix it for you because obviously they could see that I sewed. <laughs> So um, this is where it was ripped. So come in closer, Dale. It was just ripped in the seam. So some people don't even realize that something can be fixed. <laughs> he thought it was a lost cause. Now, yes, it is ripped a little bit under the arm, but I can mend that, I can fix that. So as I tore it apart last night, um, getting into it to fix it, it became obvious to me very quickly that the sleeves were also um, pretty much in tatters. This was the sleeve that I thought was okay, but it was so worn at the bottom that I thought, well, if I'm going to reline one sleeve, I may as well reline the other. And then deciding, well, what am I going to line it out of? I thought, this guy is climbing trees and he's cutting down trees, so he probably really needs give in his sleeves. So I'm actually gonna do it out of a knit. So I cut two sleeves now. Here's the one that was really bad, look at that. I mean, I could see why he thought this coat was a lost cause, but it really isn't. And then I thought too, since my pal Dale was coming over, that I would just show you some interesting things that if you've never taken a garment apart before, that you might really be interested in. It's, it's always interesting to me. So first of all, if you've never tailored, inside the sleeve is what's called a sleeve head, H-E-A-D. Um, and what that does is it just really pads the cap of the sleeve. There weren't really shoulder pads in here. Oh yes, there is something. The other thing is that the armhole was taped. So this is a twill tape going entirely around the armhole. So I'll get that replaced in there as well. This is a very heavy Melton fabric, which is a, a felted fabric, traditional pea coat. Um, but then look at this. Underneath the arm, there was this added piece of felted wool, and that was actually top stitched inside underneath the arm. I honestly don't know what the purpose for that is other than perhaps keeping perspiration from coming to the outside. I, I really don't know, but I found that interesting, so I'll get that fixed back in there. And then, um, okay, in tailored garments you have what's called a jump hem. So you see the lining was actually longer than the garment itself, but it's hemmed in such that there's this extra expansion area. I thought it was interesting too how this was printed on the inside. I have no idea what that means or what it says, but it was all over the lining. The lining itself was ripped several places. And then as I got into the sleeves, I noticed that down here it was ripped and a little bit worn. So what I'll do here, since all of this is really like in here, the lining gets detached right here. I'll take some pieces of this fabric and put them underneath this area and just mend stitch over top of it. And I had to open this up this much in order to be able to get in here to sew this seam. The other thing that always just amazes me as you get inside garments is the dirt, <laughs> the fluff. Look at this that ends up inside garments. Even on your husband's tailored shirts, if you open up that inside front fold, it's just all of this fluff from the fabric. And having been wearing this coat to cut down trees, how in the world did that tree stuff get inside this very heavy fabric? I don't know, but it did. I mean, that is definitely pieces of bark. It just intrigues me. Now that's really kind of gross and um, a lot of people who do alterations insist on things being cleaned before they work on them and when you see this you can understand why. On the other hand, if this garment with all of its ripping was taken to the cleaner, as the alterationist 
this is fix it, I probably would have had more to fix. Back closed, and I'm sure that this lumberjack type guy will be thrilled when he sees his coat all fixed up. The other place was here at the pocket. So I'll get that mended as well. But they were super workers and did a super job. So, and, and the woman, yes, it was a woman who helped this guy. She's very much interested in learning to sew. So maybe this will inspire her to come take lessons like she was talking about doing. Just interesting things about a classic pea coat. As I was working on repairing this pea coat for the lumber guy who took down the tree in our backyard, I became curious about the history of the pea coat. And this is what I found. The name pea coat originated from the Dutch word pea. The Dutch pronounced that J kind of silent, so that's why it's P I J E, but it's pronounced P, to describe a coat made from coarse wool fabric. <clears throat> While the Dutch are credited for inventing the peacoat, it was the British Navy who can take the credit for the popularization of the jacket. The British version of the coat was similarly designed for naval duties, particularly designed to be a uniform for petty officers. The coat then made its way across the Atlantic for a third appearance, this time with the American Navy. The U.S. Navy adopted the coat and used the coat for reefers, who were the sailors responsible for the unenviable task of climbing up the rigging of sailing ships. So there you have the history of the peacoat. Join me for Creative Fashion Sewing, where you'll find oodles of inspiration and detailed how-tos. For a constant stream of sewing fun, follow me and subscribe to my social media channels.